come from the Paris of the Middle East. Back in the 70s, my small country, Lebanon, was known to be the Paris of the Middle East. It was the center of culture, fashion, and art where Muslims, Christians, and Jews were one entity and religion wasn't an issue. We were all Lebanese striving for knowledge and fashion. And like all Lebanese, my best friend Jenna and I worked our magic to look older and more fashionable with what we had, our clothing, our mother's makeup, accessories, and high heels. Not to forget the oranges. We spent our days rolling skirts up and down, tightening and loosening shirts, smearing and cleaning our faces from makeup, strutting on high heels, as we laughed and cried our hearts out, trying oranges for the right size. Until the 6th of December, 1975, when the Lebanese Civil War took its toll and Christian militias took the lives of hundreds of innocent Muslims in a bloody killing spree. This day became to be known as Black Saturday. On the evening of that day, my best friend Jenna and her parents came back home, wrapped in spotted red and white sheets. Victims of hate, voices around me shouted. I didn't understand. I ran next door to play with my best friend. My mother tried to stop me from rushing into Jana's bedroom, rolling up my skirt and tightening my shirt. I pushed my way through a group of people standing by the door. I saw Jana on her pink mattress. But why can't I see her face? Why is she under the sheets? Oh, she's playing hide and seek. And before anyone could stop me, I uncovered the spotted sheets. I saw her slit throat. It looked like the smile of a clown mocking me. Here's your Paris of the Middle East. Here's the new fashion statement of the Lebanese. I looked at the wet faces of the adults around me all dressed in black. Some of them were muttering, some others screaming. I hate Christians and I will hate them for eternity. I will Kill them! I didn't cry on that day. Instead, I put the human within me to sleep and allowed the adults around me to determine my foes. Anger, rage, and hatred consumed and hardened my heart as I watched my Paris of the Middle East shatter into 18 sects and all of them became my enemies, including my friends. I wanted all the Christians gone. Two years after Jana's slaughter, the civil war was still raging. We had to leave our home. My father took our family to safety at the house of his childhood Christian friend, known to us as Uncle George. A few hours after we arrived at that house, violent knocks shook the door. Instantly, Uncle George was by my side. He took me in his arms, 
whispered into my ear and handed me a Bible. No matter what happens, don't look at the door. Stay here. Read this Bible. Tonight, your name is Mary. The door opens and I hear voices ask Uncle George to hand in the Muslims he was hiding. Uncle George insisted that he was only hosting his brother Eli, his wife Anna, and their two children, Mary and Joseph. I kept my head down hugged the Bible close, hoping they wouldn't hear my pounding heart. I have never been more afraid in my life. But when I peeked, I saw ten armed masked men leave Uncle George's doorstep. I thought I knew who to hate. My world became confused. A Christian just saved us from Christians? Uncle George arose my curiosity and I started watching him closely. He woke up early every morning, prepared our breakfast, made sure I didn't miss my morning prayer. He even made sure I didn't miss any of my five prayers. I stood on my prayer mat while Uncle George sat by my side, holding his rosary and Bible in hand. We prayed together, and every day he would say, my little Sadia, my sweet Mary, when you hold God in your heart, the human he created reveals itself by serving others, and then and only then, even your enemy becomes a human. And since there was no school, I decided to tag along with Uncle George to comprehend his words because at the time they didn't make any sense to me. We stood in endless lines at the doorsteps of bakeries to buy bread. In those days, bread was scarce, and we had rations. Uncle George used his rations and my family's rations to buy as much bread as possible. He kept one loaf for both our families and distributed the rest to those in the neighborhood with larger families. He helped people find water to fill in their bottles. He helped with the injured. He helped bury the dead. Everything he did was done in service of others. Spending those days with Uncle George slowly awakened the human within me. His words, like seeping water, trickled into my hardened heart. When you hold God in your heart, the human he created reveals itself, and then, and only then, even your enemy becomes human. Uncle George was part of my Lebanon. Eventually, he made me realize that all Christians were part of my Lebanon, and any other Lebanese for that matter. They are part of me. They are part of who I am. I am Sadia. I am Mary. I am Jana. I am Uncle George. At the age of 15, I got involved in community service and social work, and the Georges around me multiplied. They came in different religions, gender, nationalities, and even color. At a later stage, 
I discovered George within my four children. In 2006, at this very university, the University of Balamand, my path and my son's path crossed. I was doing my master degree, he was doing his bachelor. He graduated before I did. And when I came to register for next term, the cashier notices the similarity in our names and asks, how is Abdel Qadir related to you? He is my son, I reply. I am pretty sure you don't know what he did when he was our student. And I thought to myself, Allah is tor. God forbid, what has he done now? And the cashier continues. When your son was completing his studies, he paid the tuition fees of another student and they graduated together last June. No, I didn't know. My son never told me. But on that day, I discovered George within him and I remembered his words. When you hold God in your heart, the human he created reveals itself. And then, and only then, even your enemy becomes human. In 2016, another George reveals itself. In a remote village in Akkar, North Lebanon, when I visited the oldest human living female on the planet. Maimouni is 128 years today. She still plants her garden, bakes her bread, milks her cow. She survived two world wars, plagues and hunger. In 1958, when the first civil war started in Lebanon, she rushed to her neighboring Christian village and got back with her to the sanctity of her house, 100 of her Christian friends whom she kept safe for a whole month. And when I asked her why, she smiled a toothless smile and said, my daughter, never fear God's creation, but fear man's creation. And if you want to live long, like me, get off your ass and do something to serve others. You cannot encounter such a woman and go back to your daily routine. Can you? Ladies and gentlemen, in each one of us, regardless of gender, religion, nationality, or color, there is a George, ready to go beyond border, ready to go beyond the label. Just listen to him, find him, and let his words guide you like they guided me. When you hold God in your heart, the human he created reveals itself by serving others. And then, and only then, even your enemy becomes human. Thank you.